Pastor Tom Arnold welcoming you to the Good News Radio broadcast. In Mark 16, Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The gospel is not only a message we go to church to hear, it is also a message we go from church to share. Join me for part one of the message, Why Missions? Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. I want to speak today on the subject of missions. I want to speak to you today on the subject of world missions specifically global ministry. And you say, well, pastor, why do you do this? Well, when I was a young pastor, just getting started, it wasn't uncommon if you mentioned, hey, we're going to take a mission trip. People that took their vacation time, they paid for it out of their own pocket. They took off work and they said, hey, this is how we choose to use our vacation time. We're going on a mission trip. I heard a pastor not too long ago say he remembers those days in the, in the 90s when people were taking these trips. And he says, you know, I can't tell you today that if I got up and announced, I'll pay your way to go on a mission trip. The church will fund that. If you're willing to take off a week and go, I can't tell you I could get the same number of people today that I could get many years ago that would be willing to go into their own pocket and say, yeah, we want to do this. Now, that's not a healthy sign for the church. And if you want to know the health of the church, you just put a thermometer in the missions mindedness of that church. Because if that church has ceased to be mission minded, that church is backing off the very thing that Jesus, the head of the church, wants us to do, and that is to go into all the world and preach the gospel. So, today on this Mission Sunday, I just want us to talk a little bit about. World missions, why are we mission-minded? And really just this title is Why Missions? Why is it so important? So our calling is to know Christ, but it's also to make Christ known. We need to know the Lord, and that's the most important call, but we're also interested in making Christ known to other people. Someone made this statement to, that I read years ago that was helpful to me in putting together a mission statement for our church. And it said, if your mission statement doesn't have the great commission in it, you're off base. The mission statement of every church needs to have embedded in it what was the mission statement of Jesus, the head of the church, the founder of the church. Missions revolves around a passage that's found in Luke's gospel that says this, to whomsoever much is given, much is going to be required. To whomsoever much has been committed unto them, much will be required of them. So really the premise for what we do in the way of mission ministry is the reality is, wow, the Lord, you've given us a lot of light. We call it gospel light. How many Christian TV options do you have? Just broadcast television. I'm not talking about cable. I'm just talking about broadcast television. Here's a good doozy. How many churches do you have in Yukon, Oklahoma? You know, somebody counted them one time and told me how many there were. It was just amazing. So what I'm getting at is we live in a place of great light. We live in a place of great opportunity. And so it's really important that we live a missional life. You see, you don't have to go on a mission trip to live a missional life. Every day that I live is a micro mission trip. Every day that I live, I'm on a mission in a sense. I'm always have my spiritual radar out there. I'm always conscious who's around me, who is it that I can be a light to. And I think if we go that way, then we're always living mission minded. Now, these are the words of Jesus in Mark 16. Jesus said to them, and he said it to us as well, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. So all of the world means Muslim nations. It means Buddhist nations. It means Hindu nations. 
It means everybody everywhere needs to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, all creation, all the world and all of creation. Now, the hard fact is this, 96% of the world's population lives abroad. If you're going to reach the world, you have to realize that 4.23% of the world's population live in the U.S. Most people that are unevangelized that don't have the light of the gospel, they're living outside of the borders of the United States. And so it's imperative for us to have a heart for international ministry. Jesus had a heart for international ministry. In Matthew 28, whenever he said, go therefore and make disciples, notice this statement of all the nations, not just the easy nations, not just the nations that, you know, it would just be easy to get into that country. But you know, there are Muslim countries that are very hostile to the gospel. There are Hindu countries that are very hostile to the gospel. And so what do we have a call to do? We have a call to go to all the nations and it's to make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Most of this passage has to do with post-evangelism ministry. See, there's the reaching part of the gospel, but then there's the teaching part of the gospel, and then there's the equipping part of the gospel. So the reaching part is we call it frontline evangelism. It's called you're going out to reach that person that doesn't know the Lord. You bring them to salvation through Christ alone. But yet, Water baptism, post-evangelism, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, post-evangelism. Now, what we as a church, I believe, are part of our assignment is once a year we go abroad, and it's that post-evangelism work. Is what can we do to help resource, equip, facilitate, strengthen pastors, church leaders, local churches, what can we do to be like Aaron and her were to Moses to lift up their hands to help them to be more effective? So my call, our call collectively, not just as a pastor, but collectively, we need to be reminded of this. The gospel is not just something that we go to church to hear. The gospel is something that we leave the church to share. So there's twofold that we come to hear the good news, but we also go to share the good news. And I want to tell you the best news anybody can hear is that you can be born again and your name can be in the Lamb's book of life and you can have a blessed life. I mean, there's not a better, how many know winning a new car is not the best news? That car is going to end up in the salvage yard, but your eternity is before you. So So many people live within a 30-mile radius of their house. Many of us here today, we live within a 30-mile radius. In other words, in our mind, if it's more than 30 minutes away, well, let's just find something closer. If it's more than 30 minutes away, well, we don't need to go to that bank. We don't need to go to that restaurant. We don't need to go to that grocery store. We don't need to go to that mechanic. I mean, you know, we need to find something that's kind of within this 30-mile radius of our house. And you see, there's a lot of people, that's the way they live their lives, They don't think beyond that 30-mile radius to think, but there are people that speak a different language, that have a different religion, and those people need to hear the gospel. You know, right now I'm thinking about Alex Matai. Alex Matai works in northern India, and he's just so thrilled to be able to go up by the country of Bhutan, in Bhutan, they, it's illegal to have a church, but they have house churches, and you can't build a church, but you can add on to a guy's house. <laughs> so, you know, he says, we can't build a church, but we, we did a remodel on this guy's house, you know, <laughs> to make more room for him, you know, to be able to share the gospel. We need to be reminded there are so many people living outside that 30-mile radius of our lives And now we live in a very blessed state. I believe we live in a blessed city, a blessed county. We live in a blessed nation on some level. You know, I know there's a lot of people trying to curse it, but we're doing all we can to keep it blessed, right? But see, Jesus made this statement in John chapter 4. He said this, Do not say, there are yet four months, then comes the harvest. Look, I tell you, 
lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. My purpose today in this message is just to help you to lift your eyes up, help you to look beyond that 30 mile radius, to get you to think beyond where you're at right now and think about people that live beyond the borders of the U.S., the 96% of the world's population that Jesus was talking about when he said all the gospel to all of creation. That's what he's referring to. So we have this obligation. How is the demographics of world population? As of July the 1st of this year, China, 1.4 billion people. The largest population mass of any country is in China at this point in time. But India, as many of you know, is closing in on them. They will surpass them. India is 1.399 billion people. The United States, 330, right at 335 now. Indonesia, 279. Pakistan, 247. Nigeria, 230. These are all million people. Brazil, 218 million. Bangladesh, 167 million people. Russia, 141 million people. Mexico, 129 million people. So those are the top 10 nations of the world at this time. But you got to realize so many of these names that I'm calling out to you are unevangelized. So many of the names of these countries, like for example, Russia, I know I've spoke to people that have lived in Russia now for 25 years, and they'll tell you, you can go to town after town after town after town, and there may be, you know, in the city of 50,000 people, there may be 300 or so identifiable Christians in that whole community. So you say, Pastor, well, that, you're putting the heavy on me this morning. I was kind of wanting a bright and cheery message, you know. I don't want, but here's what it does. The Bible says, how beautiful are the feet of those that go bring the good news. You see, when you bring joy to others, God brings joy to you. When you're a part of the solution, when you're part of helping other people, God helps you. So one of our callings as a local church certainly is to extend pastoral care, certainly to take care of the sheep, the flock, to feed the flock, to tend the flock, to feed the babes. Jesus said, but yet there's another part of this, and that is we're called to help, help support missionaries and people that are going abroad to minister. It really touched me when we had Luke Lober here uh, two months ago and his wife, Megan, because, you know, when I was starting out in ministry, you had so many young couples that were living abroad, so many young couples that were willing to go abroad. And I know there are seasons that change. In their case, it touched me that here in the last six years or so, you know, we're living abroad. We feel the Lord definitely wants us to go and live in these countries and, and learn the language and minister. And his point was, it's not until you learn the language that you truly learn the culture. When you learn the language, you can identify better in the culture. Thanks for joining me for this message titled, why missions? Every day we live is a micro mission trip. Every day we're called to be mission minded. Jesus began his ministry by calling his disciples to become fishers of men. He concluded his ministry with the command to go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.